Hi everyone, it's Maggie Bot here with another Novlomo. And today was actually the first day in a long time I can say this. I took the day off, and that meant no work. And I also took the day off from gaming and any kind of vlogging and anything else because, oh boy, am I a little sleepy. Um, a lot of you guys saw yesterday I was at a PTQ, which is a Pro Tour Qualifier. It's a magic event that they do. Um, it's changing up in the ne next year, but basically it's a way for people who want to play very competitively to get invitations into bigger tournaments. It's also, just for a casual player, a really great idea to go in and play side events, which are casual, kind of one-off that you pay for. Um, the main event itself is hours long. I mean, you start really early in the morning, you go until midnight or later if you did very well. Um, for me, I, I went there to just get it on to Twitter and kind of talk about it. Um, my company, when we host them, we invite a couple of artists that are local that are awesome. So we had RK Post, Mark Tadine, and Anson Maddox, who are... Um, they, they're long-standing magic artists, which means that they had their art featured on cards. And they happen to live here in the Pacific Northwest, so sometimes they'll show up at events and make playmats and make all kinds of neat things. And really, um, if you could see their work in person, it's really fun to watch them go. They'll, they'll draw big playmats for people, custom playmats, which is really neat. Um, and by saying all this, I mean this is my number seven in my top ten list, of course. And today is probably my favorite two-player board game. Um, and it doesn't have near enough plays because I don't play enough two-player, but it is Trajan. And Trajan is a two-to-four player game by Stefan <laughs> Steffenfeld. And it's uh, originally by Hook and Friends and then was brought over to the States by Passport Game Studios when they were start starting out. Um, the deal with Trajan is that it is four years with four rounds a year, and each player has their own little play board that plays kind of like Moncala. So there are wells with actions associated with them, very like Matt Gertz type stuff, where you pick up all the pieces in one well and you drop them clockwise until you run out of pieces. Wherever you land is the action you're taking that round, and you can um, manipulate the color of pieces that you're dropping so that the colors match this bonus tile that you can earn. Um, then you take that action out on this giant game board. So there's military, there's construction, there's some shipping, there's this senate seat thing. Um, so really interesting game. The aspects of it that I love that have been panned the most, I think, is that it's it's almost solitary. Um, some of the position you take out in the construction or even in the military field, you do have to kind of get in other people's way, but your action board cannot be messed with at all. It is yours alone, and really you'll get to this one point in the game where you'll miscount something, and you really only have yourself to blame, which is my much preferred method. Um, I'm not particularly great at it, but I often come in second. That is that is my place in Trajan, is second place. Um, the other thing I thought was kind of neat about it, and again, not so good in reviews all the time, but people say that the theme is really dis detached from it. But I find that to be a good thing, because if Trajan had come out and not done very well, Felt could have maybe shopped it around and reskinned it with aliens or something, and then like brought it back under a different title. Um, those types of things have happened, and I think it's it's a better game for it as long as people are going to learn it eventually. Uh, but he didn't need to do that because it does okay. Not one of the highest selling games of all time, but it's also rather expensive. It's I think the MSRP was around $65, 70 dollars, but it has a lot of bits that come with it because you have all the pieces and everything. Uh, really entertaining. I'd play it most any time, but I do prefer it at two players. Um, it, it has almost an extra round, especially at four players. You can really feel the time kind of dragging on because the one thing that it encourages is thinking a few moves ahead and double-checking all of the different things you could possibly do, and there's a lot on the board. So 
it may just be my group or my experience, but people do take a little bit longer with that game than other games. And it won't be every turn that you're stuck, but it'll be that one turn where you can kind of feel that you need to set up the next three or so, so you need to think about it a little bit. Um, though the wheel can be rather punishing if you don't think, which I, I wouldn't want to do anyway. So you just have to be okay with a more relaxed environment. Make sure you have a drink and your phone to check Twitter or something else. Um, really interesting game. Uh, that's all for now. Um, I should probably get going. I'm going to go dancing and then get up way too early in the morning. Uh, always nice to talk to you guys. I'll see you later.